Well, thank you for coming on my show. Yeah, happy to be here. Thank you. And it looks like you grew up in New Jersey. I did. And then you <laughs> went to school for Boston University. I and did. From there, what made you come all the way to the East Coast to the West Coast? Ah, yes. Um, so after graduation from Boston University, um, I went back home and lived there for a year because, you know, with an arts degree, you have zero money. And um, so I did that and commuted into New York City for ballet classes, auditions, dance classes, all the things. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I did the whole Broadway audition thing for a while, booked a few off Broadway shows and tours. And there was just something in my soul that was kind of, you know, making me sort of look at the possibility of moving across the country you know if you're serious about a, a career in tv and film sure new york can work there are shows there but I, I don't know i just felt the need to go all in with it and it was a big decision to leave my family um because they were in 20 minutes away in, in in new jersey and i um by that point had moved into the upper east side so i was fully immersed in the new york culture um and actually uh <laughs> i uh, a breakup uh spurred my move actually they, um sorry about the breakup but did they think yeah, it's you're, okay did they, did they think you're crazy to move across the united states that no, you i think i mean i so after the breakup i i was like well screw this you know I, i'm gonna do things for me from now on and I booked an open-ended three-week ticket to mm -hmm. LA, slept on couches and, you know, booked a bunch of things. I actually joined SAG while I was out here. I was, I was actually working a lot while I was out here and, and signed with my agency. I mean, it was like everything happened in those three weeks. And if I was looking for a sign, well, I got all of the signs. And I remember signing with my agent before I called my mom, before I even told my parents, and so here I've like decided and committed to move to LA and didn't tell my family. Yet. <laughs> so I called my mom and I was like, mom. And she's like, I already know. <laughs> she could just hear it in my voice. She could just tell. She's like, you're not coming back, are you? And I was like, well, I'm going to come pack up my things in New York. And she's like, I knew it. You're she she the phrase she used was you're stepping in it. So right, keep stepping right. in it, you know? And um, let's talk about your book. Um, about my book? Yes. Yeah, um, so sorry, that was very loud. Oh, it's okay. Some some kind of something <laughs> happening over overhead here in the hills. Um, um, what what was tell, the question? What can you tell everybody about your book? That you're ah, okay. So acting with energy, that's been my, my work for the last 12 years. Um, it's the foundation of my actor's studio about the work. Um, and it came about after years of struggling with the question of why performances work sometimes mm -hmm. and why they don't all the time. You know, why does it feel like I'm hoping and praying and crossing right. my fingers that it works mm -hmm. this time that didn't seem like a sustainable way of working. Right? right. And I, you know, with, with, um, at BU, I was very, you know, happy and gracious to be exposed to so many different techniques, Stanislavski, Meisner, Grutowski, Adler, all of it. And, um, it just felt like I kind of used a piece of all of them, mm -hmm. but they, but it wasn't foolproof. And I was still crossing my fingers that it was the, you know, the heavens would be with me and this performance would be amazing. Right, right. And, and so I got really curious about that. Like, why does it work sometimes and it doesn't other times? So, you know, I had been kind of asking the universe of like, show me a way that can work all the time. Because, you know, if I'm going to uproot my life, move across the country to Los Angeles and leave my family and go all in on this, on this career. I need to know that every audition, I'm going to nail it. Every performance, every mm -hmm. take that I have on set, I'm going to 
nail it and everyone's going to be like, wow, that was amazing. And I'm never going to feel like, oh, I didn't, I didn't bring it or I lost it or where's my mojo or the muses weren't with me today, you know, right. And those doubts can creep in. I didn't have room for that. It was a big deal for me to move, to move across the country. So, you know, I had kind of summoned this, please show me a way (laughs) where I can count on it every time. And that I have full confidence in my abilities, mm-hmm. no matter what. If I have to cry on cue 47 times in a row, I can do that, mm-hmm. right? Like, wh- how do I get to that level? And um, I came across the energy system in the body. And um, I had really gotten quite blown away by mm-hmm. how these qualities of energy are, you know, they live in different parts of your body. And that to me opened up a whole Pandora's box of goodness. Um, and I started to experiment and explore. And that, that was how my actor's right. studio began in 2013. And um, it was magical what we found with it. And, um, pardon me. And I don't mean to stop you there, but did you start acting good. when you were in 2013? No, no. Okay. I went to school for acting. Yeah, I, I had a BFA in acting. I was fully trained, classically trained, all the things. I had been, you know, doing private coaching with actors mm-hmm. when I was 16, getting into colleges and all of that. So I'd been acting for a long time, read all the books, but it just no- nothing ever really clicked fully. It still felt like I was crossing my fingers from time to time, you know. Oh, that wasn't a good take. Why wasn't that a good take? Oh, okay. Well, you know, everybody says the body is the instrument. Well, where are the keys? Where are the notes? Because I used to play cello. I understand. Mm -hmm. I used to play a little piano too. There's, there's notes on the piano, like there's keys on the piano, there's strings on the cello. How am I making different sounds? How can I play my instrument at an expert level, like, uh, like a concert pianist? How do I do that? Mm -hmm. So when I understood the energy system in the body, that was the answer. That were the keys that I could learn to play like an expert. And it has opened up so many doors for me. Um, I regularly get the the sort of um, note of, wow, your energy is so amazing, right? Like I walk into a room and people are like, I love your energy. I always get that. And it's because I've been working on it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, people talk about charisma or, or um, stage presence or, which really has to do with expansion of the spine, right? Like understanding the body and where these energy centers lie along your spine and understanding how to show up physically in a space. Mm -hmm. All of those are sort of intangible things that can be made tangible. Mm -hmm. And that's what my book about it makes it tangible. It's a step-by-step process to understand how you can use your own energy that you use every single day, but in a very specific, purposeful way to have the desired effect that you want to have on your audience. You know, your book is so powerful. Um, You know, I read a little bit about it online and, um, you know, in where I know a lot of people are probably going to be wondering after hearing you say all that, where can they get your book? Oh, yeah. Um, you can get it on Amazon. You can get it at Target, Barnes & Noble, whatever. Um, but yeah, um, it's it's available um, on the Kindle version on Amazon and and um, paperback. And I'm actually going to be recording the audio book version shortly. I was just in conversations with the producer yesterday. So that's coming for, for those of you who love to listen to books on tape and have long commutes. Well, I know, I know that's good because I know some people, they, they like reading, but they have a hard time. So then when they hear somebody reading to them, they don't have to worry about the Yeah, books. They can just, you know, continue on um, yeah. there. Um, you know, you have your own um, studio in the e- actor studio in East Hollywood. Is yes. that cor- that's okay. <laughs> so you have to correct me. And um, how long have you been doing that? We just celebrated 11 years last week. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. And now, and now this is a question for you. And I know you have your own studio, but I think a lot of people have questions. And this is for, and you, you experienced this because you went from New York to LA. 
what can you tell a lot of young actors and especially college kids, probably not high school kids, but especially who are 19 years old, um, doesn't matter where they live in, in the United States, their dream is to move to LA and they feel really nervous moving out of state, going to LA. They have no friends, don't know, no family. They don't know what's going to happen in their life. They have to get a job. They don't, they don't know what's going to happen. They don't, you know, they're probably going to face anxiety. They're probably going to face depression. They're probably going to face loneliness, right? And what is your word? Because you, you went from New York, longer distance to LA. And, and I'm pretty sure people from Hawaii can probably face the same thing. But what is your advice for for people, for guys and girls, and maybe for younger kids who are like, I want to do this. And they're like, okay, especially for those high school kids and, and for and, and for who are 19 years old and for college kids and elderly people, what is your advice for them? So uh, my answer to that would be find an artistic community that you trust, that you can lean on. Uh, for all of the reasons that you said, you know, all the trials and tribulations that they're going to face. Um, it is so helpful to have artistic peers that you can trust to help you throw a tape on, you know, an audition on tape. Um, to just maybe create and collaborate and, and build a project together while the industry is slow, which is mm -hmm. notorious, right? Every, 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 every other sentence or, or month it's, it's all oh, the industry slow. Oh, this. Mm -hmm. So, Oh, we have a strike. Oh, we have a pandemic. Oh, we have a writer strike. You know, everything is always happening. Mm -hmm. So we have to, we have to find a way to bridge over those tricky times and a community can help you get a job. They can help you get an agent. They can help you um, with your auditions. They can just help you with feeling like a <laughs> human being that belongs um, and that you're not crazy. And that counts for a lot. Um, I know, you know, when, during the pandemic, when we opened our online doors and we went global, we we expanded uh, the studio into five, six countries across the world, Australia, Australia. Um, England, Germany, you know, I mean, it was crazy. I was past my wildest dreams, but it was amazing. And we built such strong relationships with those students that I only saw in this format mm -hmm. week to week. But, you know, we had intensive programs and, and in our studio, you know, we really value connection. So that's like one of our top things, because if you can't connect to each other, how are you going to connect to a scene partner in an audition or on film, right? Or and on you know, camera. And since you mentioned the pandemic is that a lot of people were facing anxiety problems already, all right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think, um, you know, you answered that. It's a good, you know, it, you know, it's, it's difficult when you're for you, well, not for you, but you know, and the reason I ask you, because you have a lot of people probably before the pandemic, 2019, they went to LA or they moved to New York to do acting and all this and everything paused. And mm -hmm. everybody's like, wait a minute, there's no more acting. There's no more what I have no job. What what do I do? I can't I don't want to move back. If I move back, then I'm stuck, right? Yeah. Just, what yeah. should I do? And you know, a lot of people are like, okay, I guess I have to do Uber Eats, I have to deliver food, I have to do something to but, you know, that's what the reason I ask you is because, you know, now the pandemic's over, but, you know, what, you know, and it, it, good advice is like, what can people do? It's like, what is going on? What, what can we do? And so I think, I'll, I'll explain what sort of happened. I'm sorry oh, to me to cut you off. <laughs> no, no, no. It's all, it's all, it's all good. It's, it's that, you know, this was unexpected even for me when the pandemic ha happened and we had all these students from other cities and countries, but we we built these incredible relationships and mm -hmm. connections on Zoom and so much so that you know i've i've had new york students that that are like oh you make me want to move to la like i i love you guys i miss you guys i want to come be in person with you now think about if you're a newer student and you join an online community that has that amount of connection mm -hmm. now moving to la is an exciting thing and not a scary thing because you have a cushion of friends. Right. 
and, and a community that can guide you. Um, and that's invaluable. That's kind of the reason I started this studio beyond, you know, wanting to explore all of this energy work. For me, I wanted a place where people could try new things and take risks. And, you know, with all the other studios in LA, at least what I had encountered when I moved here was that it just kind of felt like everybody was just trying to do their best work all the time and nobody wanted to try anything new and fall down. Now I get it. This is a town where if, if you look bad, then you might not get rehired. Right. Acting studio scenario. How are you growing if you're not taking risks? Mm -hmm. True. Right. So for me, I wanted to reward, like have a safe enough place and environment where actors could push themselves out of their comfort zone and try something new and really see and push the boundaries of their craft to really see what they're made of. And I, I love, and I'm proud to say that I've witnessed so many trajectories of growth among the hundreds and thousands of students that I've seen over the last 11 years. Yeah, and that that's amazing. Your story is so inspiring. And, you know, I'm proud of what you're doing. You have your own studio and keep it up, you know, and and it's it's good because a lot of people who, you know, can't afford college, you know, they want to just do acting. They yeah. automatically just like, I'm moving to L.A. I don't care. Yeah. And they move. Yeah. And you're thinking of them. You're looking at them like, wait, you're crazy. Right. You know, no one went out there, but they're like, I'm going to go out there. And I think and not I think it's because your studio and other people out in L.A. who are helping people. To yeah. pursue their goals and their dreams, um, yeah. they're acting. So my next question is: This is another one that happened. Is when we had the actor strike and the writer strike. What was going through your mind and your fellow students during that time? Did what was what was happening in your mind? Like in reality, did did you think the the strike was going to go longer? Back in the time, did you think it was going to last that long? And what was what was going through your mind? Like I know you were still doing your acting school probably, but I think a lot of your students are like, Okay, should I continue doing this acting school? What what's what's happening? You know, and, and the streets are going crazy with people protesting and you have, yeah. you know, all the actors out there, but in the back of their mind they're like, Okay, I, I is this gonna end soon? What's going on? We 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 were for this, but we need a solution. So what what was going through in your mind and, and your yeah. students? Yeah. So, I mean, no, nobody could have predicted how long it, it was going to go, but I will say that the pandemic for me was sort of a, a lesson in crisis management <laughs> um, because what gets you through turmoil? It's always community. It's always community. So, you know, out, like we actually, this, this happened during the pandemic, um, you know, we couldn't see each other in person anymore. Mm -hmm. And but we always like to chat before class, after class. I mean, we'd stay for hours and chat and just like, we just really like each other. All, you know, the students, everybody is just a good vibe. It's good energy. Right. So, um, we missed that when we moved online because it was like class is over. Okay. And the Zoom meeting. Bye. Right. And there's no chit chat anymore. So I, I implemented um, a first Friday's sort of initiative where we would meet on Zoom every Friday from 4.30 to 6, sort of a happy hour vibe. And you could bring whatever you wanted, a, a beverage of choice, tea, whatever, light a candle. <laughs> and we just kind of, you know, talk and connect and, mm -hmm. and talk about our families and our troubles and our all this stuff. And I realized every, you know, everybody showed up for that because we craved it we needed right. that this need to create and when we are not able to create we have to find a way it's like right. the grass will grow through the concrete it's gonna it's gonna happen we're gonna find the sun and we're gonna grow towards it so i don't care what is in the way we're gonna make it happen but we have to do it together and are so, you still are you still doing it oh this has tra transformed into a total personal development series that I lead on the first Friday of every month. Um, and, and everybody shows up on zoom and we dig into a very deep human development topic. Mm -hmm. 
Um, we've dug into our whys, um, like Simon Sinek, who's a good friend of mine. He wrote the book, Start With Why. So we we actually took the um, his you know method of finding your why, and mm-hmm. I led led the group in that, and that made everybody just have huge breakthroughs and just you know in their purpose in life. And um, we've gone through our saboteurs, right? Like those voices that talk to us and tell us you're not good enough. You're never going to be good enough. And how to understand when that shows up, what to do about it, and how to kind of shut that down. Um, Say thank you because they're just trying to protect us, but also no thank you. Um, And and we've dug dug into self-worth, self-compassion, um, all kinds of uh, different self-development topics, goal setting, values, um, just all kinds of different topics. And I reveal it every month and it's always a big reveal, like what's the topic going to be? And it's fantastic. I mean, everybody's so raw and real and honest and truthful. And that's where where the authenticity mm-hmm. comes through in our work. If we can't be honest with ourselves, then we can't be honest with each other. And if we can't be honest with each other, then we can't be honest with our audiences. 100%. It, it, you know, it all builds up together. So we, you know, we banded together. Um, Even, even during, um, we even did an online production at one point because we were just itching to create. (laughs) And I had everybody write their own scenes and it was all sort of to like, we Mm -hmm. came up with it for the project and then two people paired off and they had to it was an escape room because we (laughs) were all on zoom so we had to shoot it on zoom so so we shot it but you know this actor's looking this way and the other actors looking this way so they were you know and i made the eye lines match because we were we were stuck in an online format so we made it work again the grass is going to grow through the concrete you can't stop us was good you get it recorded Yeah, we did. We did. We recorded it. Yeah. And and I know you mentioned it now. So where can people watch it? Oh, it's not ready. Oh. <laughs> it's not ready for that. No, but we did. But we did that. You good, know what good. I mean? Wow. Um, and we shot it in Zoom because right. we we were very much under locked lockdown well, that's at amazing, that. Amazing. You know, the reason I ask is people are probably watch this and like, oh, where can we watch this? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But totally. you know, that's a good. That's a really good idea. Um, You know, now to you, um, a little bit, probably everybody's wondering, not your family, but what do you do when you're not on Zoom and you're not in your studio and you're not acting and what do you do for fun? Like, what what do you do? What what can dance actually actually run into? And they're like, hey, what what is we? Yeah. So um, I, I was a professional ballroom dancer. Um, I actually also own a ballroom dance studio um in Hollywood as well uh and I, I have a staff that teaches wedding couples and um you know couples that are just wanting to learn to dance for fun so very beginner novice level mm-hmm. but it's super fun to share the joy of dance I actually just found a, a new coach um at a professional level that I you know I used to be training all the time mm-hmm. and then I have two kiddos <laughs> so um you can find me at school drop off pick up and uh in the dance studio having my um my latin lesson and that's where people may see you yeah <laughs> so how does your um kids feel that your the mom is kind of up there and <laughs> doing their thing and you know you know i think i mean well i will say my son is very comfortable on camera i think just from osmosis he uh learned how to just be super comfortable speaking to a camera speaking doing selfie videos i mean he does to- he does amazing tours of our house he'll take the ipad and just go around the house and give a tour of the whole house so cute um and actually uh on uh, was it tuesday he had a, a country's report and he had egypt and um um, he did, uh, he recorded a weather report for Cairo, Egypt, and he had a little microphone. He's like, here, you know, here's the weather update in Cairo. We're looking at high 85 degrees. Ooh, it's hot. You know, and he's so animated and I'm like, oh my God, sweetie, you did amazing. <laughs> so uh, does he want to be an actor? Like, you know, 
pursuit? You know, I don't think he quite understands it. He's actually been in a few films with me um, just because they needed kids. And he was like, sure. Um, so he he's, you know, for, for a kid that had an IMDb credit at like five years old. <laughs> um, you know, there there you go. But um, he enjoyed being on set. You know, it was all fun and games and play. It wasn't a serious thing. But um, yeah, I don't know if they're going to get into it. I know my younger son is very, very muscular in a dance mm-hmm. busy way. And um, yeah, his turnout is amazing. So oh, I wow. bet he'll get into dance at some point just by sheer genes. <laughs> <laughs> so where do you, what's your... Well, where do you see yourself in five years? In five years, um, so I'm actually uh, a couple of a couple of new avenues are in front of me at the moment. Um, so the work that I've done, the energy work, um, you know, not only does it help you tap into your emotions and and help you understand yourself and your brand of authenticity and how you show up um, in your acting craft, but it also helps you know, people who are not actors, um, especially people in business, Mm -hmm. um, leadership positions. So I have, you know, a a lot of people that are really interested in expanding their leadership qualities. And so they're now doing inventory of themselves and how they show up via the work that I do. And it's fascinating to see them have these breakthroughs of, oh, wow, this is getting in my way. Oh my God, I have to deal with that thank you, you know, or, or, you know, some kind of emotional release happens because there was energy trapped somewhere. Mm-hmm. And then it just comes out when we're doing, you know, our exercises and warm ups, and they're not expecting it, but they're realizing, wow, this has been holding me back. I mean, I had one guy hysterical crying and thanking me and, and like hugging me after his first warm up, And I was like, what's, <laughs> what's going on? I'm loving this, but what's happening right now? And, you know, he was like, I have had so much anger towards my mother who is now passed on and I could never, you know, grieve her death because I was just so mad at her Mm -hmm. and the way that she treated me growing up. And then, and he was like in that warm up with, with the exercises that you did and how I was able to put it on my voice and in my body and on intention with a direction I feel like a weight has been lifted off my shoulders and he basically worked through a trauma. He had a trauma release during our, our work. And that was an, an aha moment for me. Cause I was like, Oh, I was not expecting that, but wow, I'm listening. Thank you. Okay. You know, I can, I can share this with others in a, in a way where they can safely let go of the things that are holding them back. That's um, very powerful. Yeah. That was something I just, I did not expect at all. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, everything that you're doing is helping so many actors out there. And so, you know, and that's powerful. And the story, like you, he was telling you that helps you as well, help people as well. You know, Mm -hmm. now um, off the topic real quick, in 2010, you were in a film uh, or TV show called All Your Children. And um, Oh, All My Children. Yes. (laughs) Um, What can you tell, and you were the casino waitress. Um, but of course, what can you tell people a little bit about it? Working on a soap set is fun. It's quick. It's, they are efficient. Um, you know, the hair makeup's great. It, you know, it's just very comfortable, I will say. Um, you know, when you're on location with some of the, the, you know, bigger films and things, you're, you're in a trailer, it's small quarters. Sometimes the, um, it's really hot or it's really cold and there's not really a comfortable place to be. Um, but working on soaps is, is quick and efficient. I will say that. And, and even when they do their takes, it's like two, three takes tops because they've got four cameras going. Mm -hmm. They either got it from this take, this take or that take, or even the first take may have been great and they'll do one for safety and then move on, um, on the bigger sets when there's only one camera, you know, sometimes you're doing seven, takes so yeah (laughs) because then you know then they have to do the turnaround and the close-ups and the whatever so you know those six shots that they 
have to do times, you know, four or five, that's mm -hmm. 20 or 30 takes that you have to do to, to finish out that scene. Yeah, so if you can sure. have a repeatable <laughs> technique that you can count on your performances every single time, that's going to be tricky, especially when a whole crew is looking at you and the lights are on you and the camera <laughs> has choreography and they have to punch in on a dolly push in shot on your face and a close up. And if you're not technically specific movement wise and emotional technician wise, mm -hmm. then you're going to hold up production. Mm -hmm. People remember that because time is money. So, you know, yeah, that, that's, that. that's, that's always been a thing, you know, nobody wants to be the one holding up production. That's right. terrifying. That's like a nightmare. Because I, you, I totally know, you. you know you're just like not getting hired again. You can just feel it and then you're not going to deliver. You get nervous yeah. when people are looking at nervous. you. Nervous, yeah. Because you have, you know, especially with the bright lights, everybody's looking at you. You're like, yeah. wait, everybody's looking at me? Why is everybody? Oh, okay. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> if I don't look at me. It, it's yeah. good when you have people looking at their cell phone. They're like, okay, you're looking at your phone. They're not looking at me. Okay. But when everybody's <laughs> looking at you, you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What, what's your upcoming roles that you have? Any upcoming projects? Yeah, I have. I have a couple. Um, so I if just you're allowed to talk about them. Yeah, I, yeah, I just I just directed um, a sizzle reel for a pilot called Bad Therapist. Uh, we shot in January. Mm -hmm. um, had a crew of about thirty and a cast of about six. Um, and we shot six scenes out of the 44 page pilot or whatever it was. And, um, so that we're actually just picture locking this week and then that will move into the next part of post production, um, oh, wait. Blurring and sound and all of that. Um, so that was fantastic few days on set shooting, you know, 12, 14 hours was great. Um, and we got to shoot in my studio too, so I was on my home home turf. <laughs> wow, amazing! Congratulations. Yeah. You know, you know, I I really you know appreciate you coming on my show, um, talking about your book. Um, yeah. Especially, I you know I feel mm -hmm. like me personally wanted to get out there, let people know more about you, about your book, you know, about your story, about your background, you know, especially you know, um, you moving from New York all the way to LA but I had to mm -hmm. ask that question because I know a lot of people are so wondering many. why should I really take this risk moving mm -hmm. right when you you know you go from Atlanta should I go to Atlanta right you live in New York okay maybe I should move to Atlanta oh no maybe I should move to LA right or maybe I should move to New Orleans or maybe I should mm -hmm. do this so I think a lot of people are wondering what should I really do and yeah uh, and then when they hear your story about oh wait she came from New York all the way to LA that's a longer distance yeah but, you know people may be possibility be facing the same situation or same scenario you are it's like okay should I move from LA to New York or move I should I move to LA or should I move to New York should I move to Atlanta Georgia so I think a lot of people are like wondering what I what I should do and I think and I believe your message has helped a lot of actors and actresses out there to decide for sure what their journey should be and what their passion, you know, never give up on their passion. That's for sure. Yeah. I will say that the, you should move when the pain of staying is greater than the fear of moving. Mm -hmm. When that equation tips the scales, go on, go, Just get go. out, go there. <laughs> Pack your bags. You got to go because you won't be happy otherwise mm -hmm. because, you know, there's something inside our bodies that are like, what if could I do that? And take a risk. won't ever know unless right. you take this. That's how I mean, that's, that's the reason why we reward risk taking at the studio is you don't know if you could be better than Meryl Streep. Right. You got to try. Let's see. Because you hear you know, all the you hear all the stories of all the actors who were out there who yeah. won who won awards, and yeah. you hear about their journeys. Are like, wow, you have a college degree, but you just won an Oscar award. And you're yeah. like, wow, you were in this big film, but mm -hmm. 
but and when you read about them and the study about their family history, you're like, wait a minute, you have a college degree, you have a degree, but you are doing this, and you're doing, and you're like, wait a minute, you don't even mention about your degree. It's like, wait, what? You know, it's like, but that to me is inspiring because they're yeah. pursuing their dream, their passion, yeah. and that's, and also you have some out in 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 New York, right, especially in California, who have no degree and they're doing it, and so. Yeah. It's really inspiring. So, yeah. Thank you yeah. for telling your story. Absolutely. Absolutely. I would love to have you back on my show. Definitely. I would love to get you back on my show and talk more about your journey. So I appreciate you coming on. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I actually have a gift if if you're um if this would be okay to share with with your audience. Yes, um, please. Yes, I'll, please. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll put it in the chat and you can wherever you post this you can um you can share it it's a little free guide from me um I'll pop it right here so this is this is a a little guide based on some of our our techniques the macro method which is actually the second book that I'm mm -hmm. uh writing right now I'm on chapter two I got eight more chapters to finish but everything's outlined um so this is the next book coming out, but this is, um, this is a free guide for your next audition of how to immediately raise the stakes, um, and get your audiences invested immediately. So yes, it's a little secret, you know, you can, um, go to that link and, and we'll send you that guide for free. I appreciate it. And thank you. And I'd love to, um, have you back on my show again. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, another thing we have is we're doing a team camp. You mentioned oh, about yes. this. Um, let's, let's talk about that, please. <laughs> oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. So we we've expanded and we're starting uh, a teen camp, um, a TV film specific um, camp for for teens age mm -hmm. 13 to 18. Um, and it'll be starting July 8th until August 2nd. So it's four weeks total okay. from 10 p.m. to 4 p.m. So it's a full it's like and this is in California. You, this is in California at, in person at our studio and um, the students will be working on script analysis, breaking down scripts. They'll go on camera. They're going to learn stage combat, working on voice and speech um, and, and doing also the energy work that we were talking about earlier. Um, and then it all culminates in a final industry showcase where we're going to bring in agencies that rep teens, specifically casting directors that cast teen shows um, and like, you know, kids shows, Disney Channel, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, um, so that these guys can get some exposure and you just made build my, some you, relationships. You, know, you, you made my hair stick up because that's the reason I love you more. Um, because ah. it, that's powerful. That yeah. is really powerful. So please send me the link to my, uh, my Instagram. And we'll talk more about that. I'll share on my story about your teen camp. But I would yeah. definitely, definitely, um, I'll definitely share that. That is very powerful. I appreciate it. And, and I see it right now. Thank you. Yeah. And we're we're definitely going to, um, I'm going to share on my Instagram, share on my YouTube page, but uh, that, is, it, that is powerful. And so I do appreciate that. And um, I wish I had that <laughs> as a teacher. So I'm giving, I'm giving back to the world what I wish I had. <laughs> right. You know, that's good. That's good. A lot of actors. So, um, and then people can go on there and apply is that. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Thank you. I would love to have you back on my show. Definitely. You got it. Thank, Thank you, you for, for having me. Thank you for coming on. You got it. And you have a good day. You too. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.